Hello, I'm Steve Olson, the Manager of Training Services for Mesa. In this video, I'd like to take a look at the Autodesk Nesting Utility, which is a relatively new addition into the product design and manufacturing collection. So before I get into the workings of the nesting utility, I kind of want to set up the scene here real quick. So I actually was working with a customer that uh, the guy that's been doing all the drafting work in Inventor is going to now be called upon to do some CNC programming. And uh, along with that, it's going to, you know, nesting is going to be important to him because he's going to need to take, you know, several different components, bring it into one uh, layout that he would then route on a big uh, table router. Uh, at first, I wasn't sure if the nesting utility could handle wood components, but uh, I dug into it and actually it does. Initially, the software was for just sheet metal components, but then they've made some updates. So now it will also handle standard inventor parts and also parts that are just a sketch. Uh, however, along with all this, there's a few things that are a little bit different. Uh, you know, when you're working with a sheet metal component, it has material and thicknesses defined in it. When I work with a wooden component, I don't necessarily define that material thickness as, um, as, as a property or as a parameter and kind of go from there. So with that in mind, there's a few things that we need to be aware of in the nesting utility. Lots of times it handles this automatically, but I want you to understand what, it, uh, what, what settings are here just in case they're not working for you properly. What I want to do is I want to open up this one component and show you what's going on in here. So for me, uh, one of the things that kind of was a difficulty right away with this is I would typically model this as one big rectangle and then do two different cutouts. The nesting utility only recognizes one feature. So I had to kind of change my thought process here to make this all one extrusion. Also, again, because the material thickness isn't necessarily defined, I need to make sure it was kind of figured out. And the first time I tried this, it didn't quite get it. I kind of had to monkey around with it a little bit to get it to set up right. But after kind of working with it, a couple things that I can point out to you to kind of have the benefit of the struggles I had is if I come into this one component and I right click, I do have this nest authoring. You can see here that it's going to kind of figure out the thickness uh, from this. I can set that to a parameter. Uh, it kind of figured this out. Also, if I come to this extrusion one here, I can right click and say use for nesting. This is a checkbox that if I have multiple features here, I can't set the, like if I turn it on for something else, I'm gonna turn it off for something, uh, for whatever had it previously. So just be aware of that. You know, your mindset might need to change a little bit for things that are gonna get nested because you need to have one feature. Also, it doesn't really like construction geometry. Um, I got a lot of errors about open loops and stuff, and after digging into it for a while, I realized that construction lines kind of got, they kind of don't get understood as construction lines. They get kind of treated as regular geometry, and it might kind of throw some errors about open loops. So that's another thing you need to be aware of. Now that we've kind of got that figured out, Let's take a look at how to create the nest. I'm going to update here. Let me just save this real quick. So now that I'm saved, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this top line item, which represents the assembly. I'm going to say create nest. It'll ask me to pick a template and that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and pick the standard inch I nest template. And I get this style issue here. That's fine. It's just a style mismatch. So it's going to try to match the material definitions inside that file with the process material library. I probably don't have these defined. So it's going to create them for me. And that's fine. That's pretty typical. It's, it shouldn't be too much of a big deal. One thing that I did learn fairly quickly when working with this while that loads is it loads everything it could possibly conceive to nest. So uh, I was working on some larger assemblies that had like 500 some components to it. And it took a good half hour or more for it to kind of sort through, load all these things and try to figure out what could get nested and what couldn't. So just be aware of that when you're working with some larger models. It could take a good half hour to load depending upon how many total components you have. This, com this cabinet that I'm working with here 
is a little bit simplified. Um, I, this is just kind of one for a test, but there's it's not a fully functioning assembly. If I was doing this for real, I'd probably have probably twice the number of components in it that I have now. But these are all the things that would get nested or at least get routed. So that's why I kind of have it simplified. Now, one thing I do want to show you here is there might be something that I don't need nested that it picked up. For example, here I've got the front, the side, the shelf, a door, and a top. Let's say we buy that door so there's no need to route it. So I'm going to right click on this. I'm going to tell it to delete that. And now it's not going to be part of any of the nesting here. I'll say OK. It will then load all these model representations into my design here ready for me to nest these. Now one thing to bear in mind is these first three are the sides, uh, the front, the side, and the shelf, which is all 3 8 MDF. The top is like a, a 3 quarter inch, so they're going to go into different materials. So at this point I'm going to go ahead and hit create. It's going to show me here the name of the study, how many do I need, um, kind of going on down through here. Uh, show me the two different packages. And I'll go ahead and say OK, and it will create those. So you can see here I've got um, these two different nests. This is based off of an 8 foot by 4 foot uh, piece of 3 8 uh, MDF. If I need to change the material size, I can go into my process material library. I can go to whichever package that is, that is uh, material ID and if I come down to the packaging, I can change these sizes. Let's go with maybe something like 50. Uh, that might be a little bit easier to work with. And then I'll have to have this update. And there we go. Now, one thing about this cabinet side is with this wood, there's a finished side and there's an unfinished side. So I need to make sure that the right side is up with this one component. And this this one piece here seems like it is, yeah, it is kind of a mirror image of what it's supposed to be. Typically with sheet metal, there's not always a finished side. So it just it's it understands it could flip flop it either way, depending upon what its needs are. In this case here, I need to be very careful about which side is facing forward. The shelf in the front, they're symmetrical, so not really going to matter a whole lot. But this one here, I do want to make sure that it is flipped the right way. So what I can do is I can edit that nest, go into its properties, and this bind is kind of letting it kind of control it well how it needs to. I'm going to uncheck that and recognize it needs to be mirrored. Say OK. And then that should recalculate it and correct it. And now that's laying the right direction. You can see it's even moved around, trying to match up those long edges so that way the router um, can work with it a little bit easier. One other setting I should have mentioned while I was in there. Let me go back to this one. Is when I'm working with this component, I'm going to then put this on a router table and route it. I'm going to do that in HSM here in just a minute. I need to make sure that my item separation here is in line with the diameter of the bit I'm going to use. That's something I kind of worked with here initially and I kind of realized I kind of messed up is that when I first did it, I was not getting the HSM toolpath to go up between the components and I wasn't sure why that was. And after a little bit of investigation, I realized that the item separation between those components was smaller than the bit diameter. So the software was like, I can't go up through there because I'm going to end up cutting away things that aren't supposed to be cut. So just for sake of doing a, making a change here that I'll reflect in the HSM I'll do in a little bit, is I'll just change the item separation and it'll recalculate that and it'll kind of make a little bit bigger of a separation there then. All right, so now that I've got this, we'll kind of just pick on this one here. I've got two different sheets, and so everything I'm going to do here could be done on each individual one. Uh, but I'm going to just focus on this one right here. So let's say I've got this ready to go. I want to export this. I have two options. One, I can export it to a DXF that I then dump into some other CAM package, or I can export a 3D model that I turn around and use uh, with 
Inventor HSM right here in Inventor. So I'm actually going to do both. I'll export the the, um, the DXF, show you what that looks like, and then we'll actually continue our work through all the way through HSM here in just a minute. So I'll pick on Sheet, Sheet 6 here. I'm going to go to Export. It'll ask me where I want to save it. I'll just kind of save it where all the other files are. Go ahead and save here. Let's go ahead and say OK. So let's take a quick peek at that in AutoCAD. So here is that DXF file in AutoCAD. You can see it's pretty much just took every all that geometry there and exported that. It does have some different line types for basically the binding box around the area where the nest is going to be. Also, all the lines. It's also got the components numbered, and it's got the name down here. I kind of gave the file names more of a descriptive name as opposed to a part number, and that's why I'm seeing the naming here being more descriptive because it's just the, the file name uh, or the part number. So let's take a look at how to take the 3D model, export that, and then work on that in Inventor HSM. So I'm going to tell it to create a 3D model. I can do a single multi-body part file, or I can create an assembly file where it ends up creating new files for all the different components in there, and then places it in there. Both of them work fine. I kind of feel a little bit more comfortable with the multi-body part file right now. That just feels, I kind of like that. Notice it's saying include stock down here, which is what I want to do. I've already got the stock defined, so when I go into HSM, I won't have to, I kind of just will utilize that. I won't have to change any of the offset values or anything there. So I'll go ahead and say OK. It's going to kick out and save me this nest right here. You can see I've kind of got um, a stock component here, kind of a little bit uh, transparent. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and create my design here, or my, my tool path. So I'm going to go to my cam environment. I'm going to go to my setup. So what I want to do is I want to kind of say, well, this corner here is my origin. So I'm going to clear my stock point and go back into my selector and grab that corner there as my origin. On the stock, this is something I want to make sure I change. It's kind of already seeing the stock that was defined by the nesting utility. So here, I don't want to offset it additionally on top of that. So I'm just going to zero out all of these here. So that's pretty good there. I'll go ahead and say OK. So now I'm going to go ahead and tell it I want to create 2D contours. I'll disable the flood or the coolant. I'll go to my tool. Let's say I want to pick by type. I'll just pick a, a flat mill. And since I use 3 8 I could pick a 3 8 bit. If I have one here, let's see, there's a half inch, 3 8. Go ahead and pick a 3 8. For my contour selection, I'll pick these contours. So there's all those edges. This should be pretty much all I need to worry about, at least in this very simplistic version. So now I got my toolpath set up. I can go to my simulate here. And for me, what I like to do with my simulate, I like to turn the stock on, but I leave it as transparent. I'll go ahead and play this and see what it looks like. There we go. So that's how you use the nesting utility. Hopefully you saw it's pretty straightforward. The sheet metal works roughly the same way. It actually isn't as, as picky because it has the, the material thicknesses already defined. It understands that flat pattern. Um, but you can see I could take that into HSM. I could take my DXF into some other CAM package if that's what we have. But hopefully you can see here I can go from my design right into my tooling. And I'm really staying an inventor in both the nesting tool and in the HSM.
I want to thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to email me at the email address on the screen. And again, thank you for watching.